Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. In this episode, I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of templating languages that you could use in building your Ruby on Rails front end. What's prompted me to make this video today is that one of the templating languages that I really like to use called the Slim Templating Language seems to be falling a little bit behind in maintenance. So today I was trying to do some things with it. There was a syntax I wanted to look up and I tried to look for the project website and I could no longer find it. The domain name was no longer active. So I went to the project on GitHub and it seems like what's going on is that the project creator and the primary maintainer for Slim is getting a little bit burned out from working on this thing and wants to get some sponsorship in order to make it profitable to work on. Now in a previous video, I talked a little bit about how open source developers tend to get burned out. And that's because when you're in charge of an open source library, you can have a lot of people writing in for you requesting technical support and you want to maintain that library out of goodwill, but you're not getting paid for it. And it's really taking your time away from other things that you want to do. So in this video, I want to talk about why that's significant, how you could help, and also give you an overview of some of the options that you have for building your Rails front end. Rails front end templates are what you find in the app slash views folder of your application source code. These templates are what Rails uses to build an HTML file that will be delivered to your website's end user. When you're starting a fresh Rails application, you might notice that the default templating language that it uses is ERB, and those files will have the .erb extension to them. ERB looks kind of like HTML, but it allows you to also inject Ruby code into your HTML. So here on the screen, I have the application.html.erb file, which shows the base template for your HTML files, which includes like the head of the file and the meta tags at the top and the title. But the important thing to notice here is that you have these special types of tags with the percent sign and then the equals. And then inside it, you could have a Ruby instruction. And these are actually Ruby helpers that you're calling into your template. And these inject HTML that's built and rendered by Ruby code. So ERB, the important thing to know about it is that it's the default that ships with Rails. It looks very similar to HTML, but it's HTML that you could interpolate with Ruby code. And that's what forms the basis for the dynamic parts of your web page. I'd like to show you a more extensive real world example of ERB code in use. So here I'm looking at the views for the Spina CMS system, and this is on GitHub, it's an open source gem that you could use with Ruby on Rails. And here are some of the templates that it uses. So these files here with the underscores, they're called partials. And these are actually elements that get reused inside of other templates. Let's take a look at some of these ERB templates. Here we have one called index.html.erb. And I'm assuming it's uh, the index page listing all of the pages because of the path admin pages. And here we have some really complex ERB. As you can see, it's very HTML looking, but we have a lot of those percent sign tags here because there's a lot of looping going on where it's doing a render of different components within the interface that refer to other parts of the Ruby program. Here we have render, spin the user interface header components. So it's referring to another class in Ruby available somewhere else inside of the program. Uh, and then here it does some iterations. And this is basically what it uses to build the dynamic HTML that you see. Now, if you're building an application in Ruby on Rails, you're not stuck with ERB. Some people feel that ERB is really messy and cluttered. Personally, that's how I feel about it. And so some of the other things that you could use have a much cleaner syntax to them. And one of the other popular alternatives to ERB is Haml. So here I'm looking at the Haml web page. And right here on the front of the page, you could see that it has an example of how it converts or how you could convert your ERB into Haml and it uses 
fewer lines of code and it just looks a lot cleaner and easier to read. Haml is based on indentation to determine where to put the closing tags. So with HTML, it's a markup language. For example, if you have like an H1 for a header, you have to have an opening H1 tag and a closing H1 tag with the slash. Here's the example. But in Haml, it's automatically going to do the H1 and create the closing tag for you. So you don't have to do that somewhat repetitive task of making closing tags. And that goes for iterative things too. As you can see here, based on the indentation, that's how you do kind of a multi-line tag. Here we have a div called content, and all you have to do is put dot and then the class name, and then Haml automatically knows it's a div. And then everything that you indent after that gets included within that div. So you don't have to put the wrapping div at the very end. All you have to do is have dot content declaring the div opening, and then everything that you have inside of that just indent right under content. And the advantage of this is it's not only easier to read, but it helps you avoid the mistake of forgetting to have that closing tag, which is something that could really mess up your HTML. So using Haml gives you a little bit of a compilation in there, which helps you avoid very easy to make syntax errors in your HTML. So here's the Ruby Toolbox website, which is a great resource for learning about new gems and libraries that you could use in your Ruby and Rails program. Uh, I wanted to look at this today to see what popular templating engines are in use right now. Something that I learned today working on this is there seems to be a new popular template language called Liquid. Here is the Liquid website. And an interesting thing about this is it seems to be supported by some really big companies like Shopify. And that's probably why Liquid is so popular right now. Now, just glancing through some of this Liquid code, it seems like in a lot of ways it's very similar to ERB. For example, right here, I'm looking at this where it has div and it's very HTML-like. Instead of using the percent sign, it seems like they're using the double curly braces to declare areas of Ruby code that's getting injected into the HTML page. So one thing to note about this Ruby toolbox list is that some of the gems here, although they're listed as templating engines, they're not really templating languages. For example, Tilt and eRubis are actually middleware tools that are used to compile templating languages. So down the list here, still near the very top, we have Slim. The Slim website is down. They used to have a really nice looking website like they do with Haml, but you can still find a link to the full Slim documentation here on the GitHub project site. Now Slim is what I've been using in some of my more recent applications. As you can see, it's very similar in format to the Haml templating language, but I actually like the slim syntax a little bit better, and it improves Haml in some very subtle ways. For example, you don't have to have that percent sign leading an HTML tag. You just start the line which, with the HTML tag. I also like the way that attributes are declared. For example, if we look here at this button, the HTML attributes are declared using the equal signs and that looks a lot more like the HTML that gets generated. So I like Slim because it gives you the same benefit of a compiler like Haml does and you don't have to do the closing tags but I think the syntax is a little bit more HTML-like so it just feels a little bit more natural to work with. By the way, these code examples I'm looking at right now with the Slim templates, I actually have those available for you to download and look at yourself if you're a member of my Patreon subscription. So be sure to sign up for my Patreon subscription if you want to look at any of my source code. Send me your GitHub username and I'll add you to the private repository so you could look at this yourself. Now, I'd like to conclude this video by going back to the Slim page. We're on the GitHub issues. As we can see here, the project maintainer opened this sponsoring link. And he's only 11% towards the monthly goal that he wants. 
If you're a big company that's making use of Slim, maybe this is a good time to uh, help sponsor this guy's project so that he could continue maintaining this Ruby gem. And you could probably contribute to the much needed updates to this gem yourself. Contributing to open source is actually a great way to develop a portfolio if you're a new developer and you wanna have some tangible things to show. My audience on this channel, many of you are people who are kind of new to Rails, you're interested in it, you want to explore it, or you're not even really sure whether you want to do Rails or not, contributing to an open source project is probably one way that you could get some experience and comfort working with the Rails language. The nice thing about contributing to open source is that your contributions are public, anybody could look at it on GitHub, and it's a lot more meaningful than you know showing some student work, for example, from a coding boot camp. So anyway, that's something to consider. If you found this video useful, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.